Hi, traders. Now, this is Brad. I just want to give you a special preview on trading the Brexit, uh, which is due for release next week on the 23rd of June. Now, there's a number of different ways we can look at this, um, and it's very hard because there's so much noise around the event. Now, let me just sort of come into uh, one of the main Brexit pages. Now, if you do have access to Reuters Zenith, you've got a whole uh, you've got a whole range of resources here around the polls, around people's opinions, uh, a whole heap of things. What you can see out of all of this, um, if you come down to the very bottom, is the true heart of the matter, and that is the volatility. Okay, so extreme volatility, the most volatile period for the uh, British pound, I think, ever. Okay, and this is because these random polls. Now, there's a number of different things. So where are the pressure points? Well, obviously, on the 23rd, the, um, the announcement will come out. Uh, I'm not sure at this stage whether there are there are going to be different polls for different parts of the country or if it's just one big national count. Now, if it's one big national count, well, then we may see some numbers coming in across the country during the day, and that may sort of swing the market one way or the other. Now, there's two things that uh, are really influencing things, or there's a number of actually, but one of the main ones is if you're looking at the general polls themselves, this is where the government has let a, a few things uh, get a little bit loose. Now, you've got the general um, odds of staying and going here. Now, that seems a little bit far-fetched, okay? This, the odds, okay, UK politics, and even looking at Betfair odds, 65 or 62% chance of leaving. I think that's a bit of a bit of a uh, hogwash because if you come into the actual, all these different companies are running polls, the ICM, Servation, YouGov, Comres, and Ipsos Mori. So, You've got a whole different range of polls here, and if you're looking at the results and some of these, the the outcome at the moment is very much undecided. All right, so the Comres it's neck and neck with leave and remain. So there, uh, as these polls come out closer to the event, there will be um, a lot more randomness in the actual currency itself. So just be aware, take these polls with a grain of salt until the event is over. We don't know what to do, and this is why there's so much uncertainty around the uh, outcome is because there's there's different polls. And don't forget, these polls are somewhere between 500, 800, and 1,000 people, right? It's not even a true reflection of what is happening across the board. So how do we trade this? Now, first and foremost, Sterling is obviously at the, at the front of all of this uh, trading activity. The Central Bank, uh, Bank of England are very cautious and um, um, are very uncertain around what is going to happen after the event. Now, the fact is they will have to wind down some of their trading agreements with the EU. It doesn't mean trading stops. They will go straight back into developing trade relations with the individual currencies or countries. And that's the way it was beforehand. So I don't see why it's such a big thing and why there is such a big threat over the, the government. Now, one thing that's stemming on the back of all of this around the volatility comes back to the Swiss National Bank January 15, 2015, where the central bank put a floor uh, on under um, Euro Swiss, that created an epic event. Now, this is different. The market is open. The currency is not being manipulated. Um, well, insofar as by the central bank, anyway. I mean, I, I don't. I believe the polls and some of the media are. are um, pushing the currency around at, at will. But what we are sort of seeing at the moment is, you know, the market is open. So the currency is moving. So a lot of things are already built into this, a lot of ne negativity. And then as you can see right here at the moment, there's uh, a little bit of a turnaround in sterling and it's rallied, you know, almost 300 points over the course of, you know, several hours. Now expect a lot of this. In fact, I would be, wouldn't be surprised to see 600 point moves up and down, especially next week around the event. So how do we trade it? Well, there's two ways. One is you can go in boots and all and think, you know what, this is going to go down and look to leave levels, sell orders on the top side or buy orders on the downside, depending if, if, if you're a Brexit or a Bromain. Um, the other part is, is managing the short term impacts in the market. Now, what you're really looking for is probably watching the equity markets, okay? The whole risk on, risk off um, scenario is very much alive and, and well at the moment. Uh, if the equity markets are getting hit, that, that means they're very cautious around um, the whole issue itself, leaving the EU, uh, and that's where we can see things happening. Once the polls do start to turn around, we start to see Bremain in front, which I think is what has happened just now, 
uh, one of the poles has turned around. We're seeing an exodus of euros sterling. Okay, that could very much shoot down to the bottom. Uh, the hardest part is working out uh, when did the polls come out? Is it close to the time of the, the release? Can you get into a currency trade or not? Okay, so one thing is taking a long-term view of the matter and you're looking for longer term levels, say four or 500 points above to get short. Um, and or if you are looking at uh, a bit of a base, maybe getting long down around 140, the figure, looking for the UK to stay in. Now, I think the speculation and innuendo that's coming, going to come out of the media around the politicians is going to be very, very confusing. So just think of the underlying opportunities, right? And first and foremost, if you come over to, say, Sterling Crosses, if, if the, there are a lot of uncertainties around uh, what happens to the UK if they do pull out, you know, with all their agreements and that sort of stuff. So what, what that is, that is a negative for Europe. So you'd be looking to sell Sterling through some good technical levels uh, if we have some. Now, generally, we've got resistance levels on the sterling crosses, but we don't have any uh, real support levels on a lot of these currencies. So negative for a leave. If they stay in, it's a huge positive, and uh, sterling should rally about four or 500 points, and it will take all these crosses with it. So that's that's the, the simplest scenario you need, you need to understand. Staying positive, leaving negative. All right. So then you come in and start to manage the situation around the opportunities themselves. So, as I said, the, uh, the the speculation over this coming weekend and leading up to the actual referendum itself will become extremely rabid. Right. They will be there'll be so much propaganda and there'll be so so many people claiming that the Brexit is in front and Remain is in front. So so what are we really looking for? If you come back into the European um, like currencies, this is where the action is going to be. It's going to be on euro, okay? Euro is going to get thrashed all over the place. Uh, sterling and obviously euro sterling are the key three currencies, I believe, that will be whipping about the place. Now, if if they leave the EU, okay, short term, euro sterling will, will rally, okay? So what does that do for us? Okay, it's probably going to prop up euro. That doesn't mean euro is going to shoot up. Euro sterling will shoot up. If sterling comes off aggressively, euro will come off as well, not as aggressively. And that's where the that's where euro sterling goes up because both euro and sterling are going down, but sterling will be going down twice as quick as sterling, uh, euro. All right. So there's not only uncertainty around um, sterling, there'll be a lot of uncertainty around Europe around this event as well if the UK pull out. You know, there could be a repercussion. Uh, ramifications for other countries pulling out, et cetera, et cetera. So what you want to do is, is try and minimize the volatility and look for good entry levels. Now, euro sterling could be the currency, okay? It has proven to be quite difficult the last 24 hours. Um, it seems like the, the natural currency, right? Exit, it goes up, they stay in, it goes down. Okay, pretty easy scenario, but trading it is difficult. So when you think of that, decrease your trade size in all these events. Because there's going to be so much more volatility, right, I would decrease your trade size to probably a quarter of the, the normal trade. You can widen out your stop losses to, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 points, okay, still stay within that capital management structure. But what it does is it, it allows you to get in um, at levels that may be a bit further away from the trend lines than usual because you're going to be running with the momentum. Okay, so sterling crosses in particular. Um, I think euro, once the general announcement comes out, we may see a short spike on the top side in euro, and then it will start coming off with sterling. I think that's the best opportunity, to be honest, because euro is trading a lot calmer. This uh, sterling is, is so erratic, okay, it's, it's almost untradeable. But then you can get into some situations where you know it's going to come off against all the crosses. It's just a matter of when we get that finite decision, yes or no has won. All right. And if, if it, as it gets closer to the event, if they are slowly releasing the numbers and we can see what's going on, well, the currency will be moving with those poll or with those, not the polls, with the actual outcomes. We will start to see this thing start to move aggressively. So um, where it will become difficult. If, the, if it's a 50-50, right, and they are getting down to the very last, you know, couple hundred thousand votes, well, then that's when it's going to get really tricky. Uh, if it comes out 50-50, and don't forget, no one's really talking about this. If it comes out even, I think the government has a choice. Um, 
and that's where it will come down to. There'll be a lot of uncertainty. I think at the moment the politicians, even though the uh, this um, these Brexit polls, or if I go up the top here, the politicians are uh, more in favour of leaving than staying. Um, um, well, then that's where things go a little bit pear-shaped, sorry. Let's have a look at that. Should the United Kingdom remain a member? So the politicians are, are in favour. Okay, so that's how silly the odds are on these ones. So when you come down to the um, looking at the main candidates, Boris, he wants to leave, and uh, obviously David Cameron, the Prime Minister, wants to stay. Um, you come down to the polls, and they are extremely random. Okay, I don't know, 7%. Well, that's just terrific. So look at these polls. These are actually updating as I'm actually going through this. Um, YouGov, well, still leave is in front on that one. The Comres, I think, was the one that I was looking at, which was extremely close. Remain, 46%, leave, 45%. So it depends on who gets their time there uh, as to which way it goes. So anyway, coming back into the nuts and bolts of it, once again, Sterling is the main catalyst, right? The sterling crosses, you want to keep a close eye on these things. If we start to get a definite result, well, then you can jump into these currencies. I think until the actual release, uh, selling sterling on rallies, and, and don't think uh, 145 isn't out of the spectrum, Any on, on these other uh, resistance lines, you can be looking to sell. Even though it's 150 points above the market, put in a small offer. Okay, You can get hit and then find your 150 points in the cash very quickly. So that's what's going to happen leading up to the event. There will be big ranges, uh, uncertain direction. Following the event, we should have a, hopefully a clear direction. If we do, then you want to try and get under these trends. It could be very, very aggressive. Once again, brokerage, brokerage firms globally have increased the margin to trade sterling. That's because they think there's going to be increased volatility. All right, and that's, that's where we're going to go. It's going to be pretty exciting in the sense that um, uh, around the actual announcement, you can expect sterling to be moving 100 to 200 points uh, per update. That's how wide this is going to be. So if you think you're going in with a 20 or 30 point stop loss, uh, think again because it is going to be extremely loose. Uh, doesn't mean you can hit it and you can be 100 points in the cash the next update. So th there are some winning opportunities here. Uh, I just want you to be more aware of the increased volatility where the main action is going to be. I think watching sterling, euro, and euro sterling is probably the best scenario. But if you're looking to get a little bit more aggressive, then don't leave out the crosses, okay? Now, sterling, and in particular, probably the tightest one, when you come into sterling, uh, Aussie, sterling, Kiwi, some of these other currencies, they have very wide spread. So just be bear that in mind as well, that by the time you get in, to get out may cost you 20 or 30 points. And by the time that release comes up, it could be 50 points. But um, but there is cash there. It's a matter of how hard you want to go at it. Um, as I said, a longer term view might be just wait for the result and have a, an entry 100 points below the market or 100 points above the market at the time, and you may get kicked into a position straight away. The one problem is, is there going to be significant slippage or gapping in the market? I think that's a decent risk to consider. I think there will be, but you could be lucky. All right, so anyway, that's that's where we are with this. The, 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 the main hardest part about trading the uh, Brexit is going to be avoiding all the random noise. So what you want to do is avoid these common articles. Look for uh, – I don't even think these polls are, are a very good indication. Um, it's going to come down to trying to find out next week what time are the releases, how are they going to release the data, um, is it going to be one big hit or is it going to be slowly, um, gradually given to the market? If it's given to the market, the market should ease into the position. It'll still be volatile, but you can trade it. Okay. If it, uh, if it turns out that it's going to be one, just one announcement, well, then that's untradeable. All right. I think they'll do the, uh, the prior, which is slowly releasing the, the numbers as they come in so they can sort of build up the profile. That takes a lot of volatility out of the currency and it will be a tradable event. All right. Um, I mean, these are the sort of news articles you're going to get as well. Hints of, uh, I'll just get this page up, hints of FX intervention um, as central banks debate Brexit response. Okay. So, you know, this is what the central banks are up against. It's an uncertain event as it was around that Swiss National Bank situation um, some time ago. So anyway, pretty exciting times. I hope they do, you know, 
just for my own uh, guilty pleasure, uh, I hope they leave. It will restructure Europe. Uh, it could lead to uh, all that debt in Europe coming to the surface and we can restart and, and get these economies growing again once they flush out all this debt. And that's what I'm really looking forward to from the, uh, from the actual uh, event itself. Otherwise, it's back to normal. Um, it may be 10 years before they have another vote. Um, anyway, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully this has helped you clear your mind a bit on, you know, where things are going with Brexit. Uh, at this point, it's a bit uncertain. But just keep an eye on sterling, definitely euro. These currencies are risk off at the moment. Selling on rallies is the way to go. Um, of course, if the polls turn around, well, then it's going to be a bit of a floodgate to the top side. But that still creates opportunities for us as well. All right, guys, have a good one. Hopefully this has helped a bit. Any questions, jump on uh, the trade zone there and uh, I'll answer your questions. This is a good time to be discussing this with other traders because there's so much uh, good information out there. All right, have a good one and good luck around the Brexit. Cheerio.